So um, in this example, guys, we say the half angle identity for sine. So sine of theta divided by 2 is equal to the square root, plus or minus, of 1 minus cosine of theta divided by 2. Now you guys might look at this and say, all right. Um, so, we, so that means theta divided by 2 equals 5 pi over 12. Right, if we want to use the half angle identities, then we're going to say, well, let's let this be pi halves. So therefore, theta then, which would be multiplied by 2 over 2, would equal 10 pi over 12. Yes, which is the same thing as 5 pi over 6. Cool? Now, are we familiar with 5 pi over 6? Yes. Now, what do we do about the plus or minus? So here's where the plus or minus kind of gets confusing. It's not plus or minus. If you're paying attention right now, then I'll know because on your quiz, you won't put plus or minus. So it's kind of obvious. The plus or minus refers to the, um, basically the, the quadrant that your half angle lies in. So 5 pi over 6, does anybody know which quadrant that would be in? Be careful. First. Think about what's pi, 12 pi over 12, right? What's half, pi halves? 6 pi over 12. So this is short of pi halves. So it's still in the first quadrant. Okay? So since this is still in the first quadrant, is sine and cosine both positive? Yes. So therefore, you don't need to include the negative, just the positive. Okay? If this was a half angle that was in the third or the fourth quadrant, then you'd use negative. All right? Um, so let's go ahead and evaluate for the cosine. So it's 1 minus. Um, Cosine of theta, which is 5 pi over 6. Let's just write it in there so we can practice that. All over 2. So the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is 30. unit circle, guys. Anybody? Anybody? Let's go quiz next class period. Just remember that. Negative square root of 3 or 2, because that's in the second quadrant. So cosine is negative, right? Don't make that mistake. And then that's divided by 2. All right. Now, is this OK? Um, no. So we have this. Now, to get rid of, well, now we have a complex fraction. So to get rid of a complex fraction, we could always multiply by the common denominator of the 2. Right? Wouldn't you guys agree these all have a common denominator of 2? So when you do that, make sure you guys apply distributive property. That's another big mistake students make. You have a double negative here, so we can make that a positive. Now, is this, is this legal? Can we, break a, can we break a radical across division? Yeah, as long as it's not addition and subtraction. Right? So that's fine. What's nice about that, then, is we can simplify this. 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2. Right? And then, now some people, some class, um, sometimes you might also see it like as a multiple choice question look like this. So they just, instead of dividing by 2, they rewrite it as a 1 half. Make sense? No? Yes? Okay. Now, let's look at the 